we have made it to the other side of the pass and well it's still a very different world than what we're used to seeing because I mean it's a much more open area than the last environment we were in but we're still not encountering any kind of mist or anything like that whoa battle time let's eh, just see what we have here Uh, what? Did we fight these things already? What? Oh, that's right. My characters have just... have already gone through that uh, boss battle and they're kind of beaten up still. <laughs> Jeez. That kind of sucks. I mean, that is always kind of the downside of having a magic user in a game like this. It's that the magic users tend to be rather weak in terms of physical strength and all that kind of stuff. Like Dagger, Vivi, and Nico are all weak physically. They can't do physical attacks like I'm having them do anyway. But their main ability relies in their in their magic powers. Now only Vivi really is even an offensive magic user. Although a Dagger and Nico can do summons and they're quite powerful offensively. But when you get a situation Damn, I tranced. Really didn't need it right now. When you get a situation like what we're in it right now where your characters are run out, have run out of MP, well, their ability to reliably attack or anything like that is severely diminished, or their ability to help out in the fight is severely diminished. Of course, there are options. I could do things. I could use an Ether on the characters. I could use a Tent. All that kind of stuff, but I'm always kind of hesitant to do that sort of thing when I don't really feel like I need to. In this case, though, I, uh, I will. I do spend enough money buying tents, making sure I have enough of these things. I have 12 that might even last me throughout the rest of the game, so no point in really saving it. They're not all that expensive. So, you know might as well. But let's say I'm in a situation where there are no save points nearby or I'm not on the world map or anything like that. I could have a problem where my characters aren't. And yeah, it's just a limitation. Not a terribly huge one because you can usually find your way around it. But it is still an issue nonetheless. Uh, where am I going? I'm not going that way. I guess I do have to go this way. Yeah, it's kind of over the horizon, huh? Oh, no. I feel like maybe I got lost. Eh. There's gotta be something this way. Alright, let's get moving. I figured out where I was. I'd forgotten about something that was supposed to happen over this way. Or maybe was it this way? It was somewhere. It was uh, like a cabin or something I was supposed to get to. I'll find it. Maybe I walked past it. Perhaps that was it over here. Repeated battles are starting to get frustrating. Oh yeah, here it is. I walked right past it. What an idiot.
kid lives with a bunch of moogles. It's weird. Friggin' thing goes in her pocket. Jeez. <laughs> They are married, after all. Okay. Yeah, sure. Whatever. I have to wander off on my own. Vivi and Dagger are both going through something right now. Oh, hold on. Oh, we got another one of these. Hey, everybody's got feelings today.
<laughs> ah, I forgot about this. I don't know, does this even matter? Who I choose for what? Chose a little one to go digging. So we have these different characters who are all experiencing different emotions. Now, um, Iko's a, the newest character that we've encountered. And she's a person who seems like she's basically just been on her own for a long time. She's had the Moogles for companions, but the Moogles seem sort of possibly just emotionally distant in regards to people and all that kind of stuff. They live as a part of, like, people, society, I don't want to excuse the word humans, because obviously not everybody's a human. And they... Alright. Ah, there he is. They seem to be almost, like, a part of society, but apart from society at the same time. So they may not make the best companions for a young girl who's living off on her own, basically. So when she finally sees some people who don't outright reject her to some level, like the um, people in neighboring villages, well, she seems to have developed a rather quick crush on Zidane here dagger here. Huh. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. No, I'm not going anywhere. Go back. D dagger here realizes that she's not the only one of her kind anymore. Because Eco could go and summon Eidolons as well. Oh, shit, that was a mistake. Huh. <laughs> yeah, he is alone. It's a mistake to come out here alone. And she always felt kind of... Uh, she didn't really like the idea about her being different than other people. The Eidolons were something that she thought was a bit of a burden. She didn't want them there. And then when they started being used as weapons, she outright rejected them. She thought she would kill them if it came to them being used as weapons, but they were extracted anyway and used as weapons, and she began to regret that now that she's here and see, she sees that she's not the only person of her kind, she's starting to feel different about that, almost like she has something else that she can or at least should have belonged to. Vivi, on the other hand, has taken... <sighs> he's taken a much worse bit of news. He doesn't feel like he's alone right now either, because there are other black mages like him, ones that have developed their own level of, sort of, their own personalities, and are not just the machines and such that were used by Alexandria as weapons on everybody else. But that really hasn't really made him feel any better, because he knows that the black mages are artificial creations, and he knows that the black mages were built to be mindless killing machines. He also knows that they are built to have a short lifespan. They don't last forever, well nobody lasts forever, but they have very short lifespans. And right now, I don't know right now if he's thinking about the deaths of all the other black mages, knowing that the people that he visited in that village, well, they may be dead by the next time he returns. It's possible that, if, I mean, the whole race, once they're, once Alexandria is finished with them, they'll go extinct. And he might die with that. I don't know if he's concerned about his species or the people over at the Black Mage Village, or I don't, maybe he's just concerned about his own life right now. When am I going to die? That kind of thing. He can't see the end coming, but he knows it is. And that can be depressing, especially if somebody with the emotional maturity of, like, an eight-year-old. Well, 
I'm going to end the episode here before I continue on with this. So thanks for watching and listening to that weird little rant I had at the end.